so in the last class we have discussed on the setting a per a perfect weight or an appropriate weight for the terms which are present in the document so that when a query is given while retrieval we can perform the search efficiently based on the term weights uh, being considered as an indication of the relevance of the document to the query so we formalized that if no, I mean, earlier we started with the binary notation that is zero means absent and one means present of a, or presence of a term. So from that we have defined this term incidence vector and this term incidence vector, it is basically, I mean the dimension, so it is for each term, say, say the term is say, say India Never mind uh, writing this India with small a i because, as I said, everything is uh, typecasted to or downcast to lower cases. So, term incidence vector of India will be basically a vector of say length m, where m is the number of documents in the collection and uh, it will be basically containing some zeros and ones based on the absence and uh, absence and presence respectively of that term india in those documents for example if i number the documents as 0 1 2 up to say minus 1 uh, one presence of the document a uh, presence of the term India in a document, say, uh, two, will be indicated by a one here. And the presence of zero will be indicating that the term India is not present in that document. That is the uh, one document and zero document. So from that, we devised the Boolean retrieval model. We realized that uh, we can actually improve upon this model by storing the term frequency instead of storing uh, this binary indicator of the, whether the term is actually present or not. So what we uh, discussed on making is, uh, instead of storing zeros and ones, we'll be storing zeros and their term weights. So instead of storing the value, say one here for India, what we'll be doing is, one way is to store the term frequency here, term frequency of the term in that document. So while discussing about the term frequency, we also discussed about the relationship between relevance and the term frequency. So if we plot the term frequency in the x-axis and the relevance in the y-axis, uh, if we use a raw term frequency, the increment in term will be uh, proportional to the, in the increase in relevance, which is not actually the case, as we have shown uh, in the last class. So that's why we discussed on log normalizing it. So here we have specified one definition to specify the weight of a term in a document T which is basically 1 plus log of the uh, term frequency of that term in the document uh, if the term is actually present in the document and otherwise zero as I said so we are actually modifying this part this part we are keeping as it is that is if the term is not present we are keeping it as a zero okay all right so now here in this example, I have shown uh, setting the words like this as if the term is present only once, that is term frequency is one, the weight will be one because here it will be one. Log of one will be zero and one plus zero will be one. If the term frequency is two of the term, 
So this part will be 2. Log of 2 will be something 0.3 or something like that. We are considering a base of 10. Then 1 plus 0.3 will be 1.3. So for turn frequency 10, it will be basically log 10, 10 base 10, which is basically 1. So 1 plus 1, 2, and so on. So earlier, so what we have done is we have basically made it like this. Uh, more formally, this is called a sublinear function. So using this uh, log-based damping, we are making this as a making the raw arm frequency as a sublinear function. It is the linear function. Sorry, the one that I have drawn. Uh, if we consider the rot arm frequency, this one, it is a sublinear function. Now, as we understand that in extra importance or additional importance should be given to rare terms. Now, uh, the terms which are rare or uncommon always contains more information than the common terms. As an example, consider this query. Diseases caused by smoking. Now, this is a four-term query. If I consider this as Q, so this is a four-term query. Now, if I, uh, we know that by is a stock word. If we exclude this, so what we are ending up is diseases caused smoking, which is essentially indicating to the same topic of the original query, that is, diseases caused by smoking. Now, in this three words, so if I number them as Q1, Q2, and this as Q smoking as Q3, we'll be understanding that the term diseases and smoking are more rare as compared to the term causes or caused. Why? Let me give you an example regarding that. Or give me, uh, let me, let me give you uh, one explanation with an example uh, in order to discuss this. So, <clears throat> if, so, uh, Let's consider the query term is, uh, or the, the, the query is given as diseases smoking. So if we consider only these two terms, this is also somewhat indicating the actual query, diseases caused by smoking. This term cause can be associated with so many other terms like uh, cause of pollution, maybe. Cause of pollution or you can, it, it can also be say cause of say inflation and so many other aspects with which this term cause or its variant caused can be associated with. As compared to that, diseases and smokings are more informative. In other words, they are more rare. That's what I have specified here. So that's why diseases and smokings are much more uh, rarer as compared to the term uh, caused here in this example. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Now, uh, as I was giving the example, if I query with Q1 and Q3, that is diseases, smoking. So we can understand that I am looking for, or if I consider this as a query, diseases smoking. So the intent of the query is we can understand that I want to know the cause, the diseases 
uh, which are uh, basically a result of smoking. As compared to that, if we consider the other two alternatives like smoking cause or diseases cause or cause diseases, that does not make any sense. Diseases smoking is actually indicative of the actual query, right? So what we have done here is uh, we have just ignored this term, just ignored this term. As compared to that, smoking causes or smoking cause, uh, if we consider a language model of a natural language processing framework, smoking causes the obvious next word would be cancer because it's very much popular uh, in all the, I mean, all the news articles, all the uh, advertisements as well. But here, smoking causes is not actually indicative of the actual information need. So do this query, cause disease, where I have excluded the smoking. So in these three types of query, what I have done is I have excluded some of the terms. This is by default excluded because this is a small stop word. In the first case, I have excluded uh, caused, which was kind of indicative of the actual information need. Still, in the second case, I have excluded the term diseases, which is not actually indicative of the actual information need. So do the third one, where I have, I'm excluding the actual most important term here, which is smoking, which is also not indicative of the actual information need. So the bottom line is, we should be assigning high weights for rare terms. Uh, now, obviously, you might be thinking that how shall we be understanding whether a term is rare or not? Now, this rareness is actually dependent on the collection. As you can see, diseases and smoking rare in the collection as compared to cause. So this rareness of a term is depending on or dependent on the collection from which you are actually drawing the documents. Now, this will be... Uh, uh, or the rareness will be uh, realized or quantized using a simple heuristics called inverse document frequency, which is uh, seen to be an indication of the rareness of the term in the collection. <clears throat> now, again, bottom line is we need a factor to quantify the rareness of the query term so that we can kind of uh, give or assign more weights to this, these two terms, more weights to smoking, more weights to maybe uh, diseases, and not less weight, but I mean, not uh, I mean, as compared to other terms, we will not be assigning, uh, I mean, negative weights, but we'll be, uh, we will be assigning lesser weight as compared to these two, that is diseases and smoking to the term causes or caused or any form of cause. And also what about the common terms? One obvious thing that we have already discussed is excluding the common terms. That is dropping or removing the stop words from the index or the query uh, before performing the retrieval. Now, as we understand that there are terms which are not actually in the stop word list, but they are also very common. For example, we have seen the term uh, movie in the in our movie Wikipedia movie plot database. The term movie or the term plot is not actually a stop word, but considering the collection, it is a common term. That's why I'm saying that this rareness or the commonness is actually dependent on the collection. 
so what to do about i mean how to actually handle those common terms so uh, a document containing these common terms are more likely to be relevant there is no point of denying that but it will be more likely to be uh, to be relevant than a document that does not of course i mean if i consider a document a pair of documents say d1 and d2 uh, if a common query term say q this is a this is belongs to the capital q the query submitted to the system this term q is present here and not present here then we can say although the, i mean without understanding or without uh, realizing whether it is common or not we can say that d1 can be uh, uh, d1 can be having uh, could be having higher relevance than d2 but as i said these words are not actually the the sole indicator of relevance their presence is important but they are uh, i mean i mean their absence is actually important if it is not present then of course it i mean we can consider it is not relevant but as we are going towards rank retrieval only considering their presence as one like the binary one or giving same importance to the presence of all the query terms is a bad idea so that's why we need to uh, handle these common terms in a different way so bottom line is we want positive weights for these common terms as well but they should be lower than the rare terms so given a query uh, we will be assigning higher weights uh, to those query terms which are there and lower weights to those query terms which are relatively common but not negative weights so that is we want high weights for the rare terms and low weights but positive uh, low weights for the frequent terms uh, basically what we will be doing is we will be using the document frequency as an indicator of the uh, i mean of the rareness or the importance of the term in the collection so we have already discussed that the document frequency of a term is basically the number of documents in the collection that contains that term so uh, so what we will be doing is we will be basically considering the inverse document frequency as the indicator of the rareness as well as the importance of the term so df we have also already discussed which is basically the document frequency it is the number of documents that the t occurs in at least once uh, uh, so uh, we will be defining idf sorry it will be idf we will be defining idf weight of a term as uh, mathematically as this so instead of basically considering 1 by df what we will be doing is we will be considering n by df where n is the num total number of documents in the collection so let's say we have 1000 documents in the collection if we consider the term da and if we and if it is a standard english collection then the da the df of da will be what expected it will be very near 2000 let's consider it is 1000 then considering this formula the idf of the will be what 1000 by 1000 basically one right 
now consider a term that's a, such as say uh say india so this term is we i can we can understand that this is a rare term considering the collection so let's say this is a collection of say wikipedia articles on different countries so india will be occurring in some of those documents it can uh, come i mean uh, this term india can occur in the wikipedia page on india as well as say pakistan because pakistan and india are neighbors as well as uh, bangladesh or sri lanka and so on and so forth now if we see that the document frequency of india is say uh, say 10 then following this formula the idf will be what idf will be a uh, number of documents in the collection which is 1000 by 10 which is basically 100 so we can understand that this is kind of an indicator uh, of the rareness now instead of using the raw uh, inverse similar to the turn frequency factor what we'll be using is a log damping or a log normalization so instead of considering the raw fraction we'll be using a log of n by df as the indicator of idf this is uh, a very important uh, factor which indicates informativeness of a term in the collection as a whole <laughs> now some discussion on comparing the tf and idf so the term tf uh, or, or the concept of tf is basically realizable in a document that is there will be two factors or two parameters here the term and the document in which we want to compute the term frequency whereas the document for the idf it will be just considering the term because idf is considered for the collection and tf is considered for the document individually some examples on idf let's say this is uh, considering the shakespeare's the complete shakespeare's collection if the term is kalpurnia uh, kalpurnia uh, was the i think the wife of caesar uh, if the kalpurnia is occurring only once in a document uh, in, in a collection containing 1 million document then the idf of the collection uh, uh, idf of this kalpurnia term will be 6 for animal, if it is 100, the document frequency, IDF will be 4, and so on. So you can understand that uh, <clears throat> this is actually a very good indicator of the informativeness of the term. Now come to the most important factor, which is term, uh, TFIDF term weighting. So TFIDF term weighting it increases with the number of occurrence within the document indicated by the term frequency and increases with the rarity or rareness of the term in the collection which is indicated by the idf factor now combining this tf and idf what we will be doing is we will be basically considering the term weight as a combination of the tf and idf Earlier, this, this was the term weight considering only the TF. Now, uh, what we'll be doing is we'll be basically incorporating an IDF factor here. So it can be considered as, I mean, instead of considering this, what we can do is we can consider this as the indicator of TF multiplication the log of uh, n by tf of the term
this can be considered as the TFIDF factor, uh, TFIDF term weighting of the term. Now, similar to this concept of class one, we can also have this. But if you do the maths and if you think a bit, you'll be understanding that this is not actually an useful, uh, I mean, an essential factor here. But sometimes to keep a symmetry in the way TF and IDF are, uh, IDFs are defined, we, we also apply an, uh, one, one plus here as well. So what we'll be doing is, <clears throat> finally, for a given query Q and the document D will be scored following this formula. Score of DQ will be the summation or the product of each query term using the formula that I have written here. Now, <clears throat> can we reduce the summation here? Here, we are considering for a given query, if it is containing, say, k number of terms, we are considering a summation over k. Can we reduce the number of terms here? Number of terms to be traversed here. Anyone? Yes, we can. How? Let's keep it small d as well. So now what we are doing is we are considering all the terms in this cycle, right? Essentially, what we can do is we can only consider this. So instead of this, we can apply D intersection, uh, Q intersection D here. OK, now what we started with is a term incidence vector. Now, instead of storing only once, what we can store is basically their TFIDF weights. So in the inverted index as well, we started with this only storing the doc IDs. Then we modified that to store the, or I mean, make an advanced version of that by storing the tar frequency. Now, what, how we can further improve it is by storing the uh, TFIDF weights of the term instead of only storing the TF. Any question up to this?